Hi, glad to see you on my channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. It's important to me. Have a good view. March 27th, attack in the 8th Guards Army Strip. On the eve of the German attack, Soviet observers noticed a regrouping of German tank units in the areas of Military Town and Alt Tuhaban, as well as the arrival of new enemy tanks of unspecified affiliation. On March 27th, the pre-dawn silence in the 8th Guards Army Defense Zone was broken by the rumble of artillery cannonade. The German artillery preparation began. According to the documents of the 8th Guards Army Headquarters, on the section of the 47th Guards Rifle Division, from 06 Mars to 15 Mars, after a strong artillery attack in the area of Goltsa, military town. The enemy launched five attacks with the forces of a battalion to a regiment of infantry supported by 30, 50 tanks and self-propelled guns. After a powerful sentry in the report of the 47th Guards Rifle Division, an hour and a half of artillery preparation, units of the 20th and 25th Panzer Grenadier Divisions and the 502nd SS Heavy Tank Battalion went to attack the positions of the 47th Guards Rifle Division. From the area of Goltsov, up to a regiment of infantry and up to 54 tanks were attacking the positions of the 140th Guards Rifle Division. At the same time, from the military town, the positions of the 142nd Guards Rifle Division were attacked by about the same forces. During the fighting, the Germans managed to break into Gorgast but on the plain northwest of Gorgast, many tanks and armored personnel carriers were mined and hit, and the enemy infantry was cut off from the armored vehicles. As a result, units of the 47th Guards Rifle Division knocked the Germans out of Gorgast and regained their previous position. In the Journal of Combat Operations of the 140th Guva.sp about these events said the following, at 04 Erao, and according to the data of the division, at 0430, after an artillery preparation, the enemy attacked the right neighbor, which was behind the river Strom, 1040th SP 295th SD. At the same time, enemy tanks and infantry began to accumulate in front of the regiment's front, and an attack of eight tanks and up to a battalion of infantry soon followed. In the Opers Vodka, 47th Guards Rifle Division, indicated that on the site of the 140th GV SPP acted up to two battalions of infantry supported by 28 tanks and self-propelled vehicles and up to 10 armored personnel carriers. At 05 hours, the regiment's left flank began to revive and at 0705, after a repeated artillery attack and covered by a smoke screen, the enemy repeated the attack in front of the entire regiment's front with two groups of tanks totaling 44 units supported by a regiment of infantry, and also attacked its left neighbor, the 142nd Spee. The division's Opers Vodka noted that the enemy used radio tanks to clear minefields, three of which exploded on mines. In one of the reports, it is stated that from the explosion of two radio tankettes in the area of the control room of the 1st Battalion of the 142nd GV SPP, the commander of this battalion, Captain Ovdun, was crushed in a dugout and the deputy commander of the battalion on the formation part, Captain Starchenko, and the adjutant, Captain Chernov, were concussed. Perhaps these radio tankers were from Panzer Zug, FKL 303. It is known that this platoon in February 1945 was in the GA Center and had four Stug 3 assault guns and 12 Borgward Force de Kufsi 301 radio tankettes, and in April, the platoon was transferred to the anti-tank battalion of the 25th Panzer Grenadier Division. Despite the fact that the enemy suffered heavy losses from artillery and mortar fire, he did not stop attacking, trying to get closer to the Soviet front line. The enemy infantry, covered by the fire of their tanks, firing direct fire at the trenches, slowly advanced. Without success, the enemy infantry under the blows of IL-2 attack aircraft first withdrew, and then returned, and, taking advantage of the support of their tanks, began to entrench in front of the front of the regiment at a distance of 150, 250 meters. The enemy tanks on the right flank withdrew into the woods, and in front of the front of the 140th GV SP on the outskirts of Goldsov. The enemy aviation was active, which made up to 180 sorties, 
by FUB U-190 planes bombing the front of the regiment. According to the data of the 140th Gov.SP, by the end of the day, all enemy attacks were successfully repulsed, and the enemy lost 12, 14 tanks and went to the defense. The regiment's own losses amounted to 11 men killed and 20 wounded, while the tank units supporting the regiment lost. The 65th Ankavaya Brigade, two T-34 tanks, the 394th Gov.TSAP, two SU-152s, and the 1087 SAP, two SU-76. Reports from the 65th Ankov Brigade indicate that only one T-34 tank burned on March 27th. Probably another was hit. The 137th SAP of the 47th Guards Rifle Division was not attacked, but with its fire contributed to the repulsion of enemy attacks on the 140th and 142nd regiments. With the beginning of the German attack, the 1187th Ip Top, which was in reserve, was alerted and moved to the western outskirts of Gorgast. The regiment lost two ZS-3 guns, three men were killed and seven others wounded. During the day, it was not attacked and did not fire. According to the report of the 108th Second Lobber for March 27th, two regiments of the brigade, the 1154th and the 1191st Light Artillery Regiment, being in the combat order of the 47th Guards Rifle Division, were firing at the advancing enemy infantry having expended 587 76 Smith shells during the day. There were no losses in materiel, and seven killed and two wounded in personnel. The combat log of the 47th Guards Rifle Division states that one enemy tank was destroyed and one more was hit during the day. Shells consumption for the day, 76 meters, 3815 pieces, 122 meter, 224 pieces. Division losses, 24 men were killed, 63 wounded, three 76 mm guns were broken. According to the combat log of the 11th Tiki for March 27, four enemy attacks in the direction of Gorgast were successfully repulsed by the 65th Ankov Brigade, supported by the 1071st Light Artillery Regiment with 24 76 mm guns and eight BM-13 units of the 115th Guards Mortar Division. During the day, the 65th Ankov Brigade claimed 11 German tanks hit with its own losses of one burned T-34. Another four destroyed German tanks were claimed by the 115th Gov.MD. By evening, the Germans had ceased active operations in the defense strip of the 47th Guards Rifle Division. Only at the end of the day, a group of six German tanks cruising in front of the front of the 2nd Battalion of the 140th Gov.SP fired on Soviet trenches. At night, a group of enemy infantrymen, probably reconnaissance, tried to crawl stealthily to the Soviet front line, but were spotted and driven back by small arms fire. According to German reports, on the morning of March 27, the Royal Tigers of the 502nd SS Heavy Tank Battalion went on the attack against the positions of the 47th Guards Rifle Division. From Goldsoff in the direction of Gorgast, supporting the infantry of the 90th Panzer Grenadier Regiment and the 20th Panzer Grenadier Division. Advanced tanks of the 1st Company, followed by the 2nd Company. To the right, about a kilometer away, along with the infantry of the 25th Panzer Grenadier Division, along the railroad line from the military town, in the direction of Gorgas Station were Royal Tigers of the 3rd Company. Soon, the lead tanks of the 1st Company ran into a minefield and after several tanks were blown up by the mines, the rest of the company halted to wait for the sappers. Under the cover of a smokescreen and the fire of their tanks, the German sappers were able to make a pass through the minefield, but after the Royal Tigers of the second company moved forward, they soon began to blow up on mines and come under fire from Soviet artillery. The Soviet tanks that appeared ahead were fired upon from a distance of about a kilometer, and four of them, according to crew reports, were destroyed. The inexperienced commander of the second company of the 502nd SS Heavy Tank Battalion, Hauptsturmführer Kurt Neu, became confused, and instead of commanding the company, he only got on the nerves of the tank commanders by constantly giving meaningless orders. As a result, his tank, maneuvering across the battlefield, got stuck in a crater. The 3rd Company of the 502nd SS, Heavy Tank Battalion on the right, got stuck in minefields in the same way, 
and one of the company's tanks with tactical number 321 that exploded on a mine was soon burned by Soviet infantrymen with the help of a captured Faust Patron. This had happened before. For example, a similar case was recorded on the morning of March 26th when the enemy attacked the positions of the 47th Guards Rifle Division with three tanks from the area of the military town. Two tanks were hit by artillery, and the third tank was burned by the commander of a squad of machine gunners and the commander of the first company of the 142nd Gov.SP, Guard Staff, Sergeant A.S. Prisman. In the end, the German attack failed, and 13 surviving tanks of the 502nd SS Heavy Tank Battalion withdrew to Neu Tukabond. The Germans did not attack anymore in this area, and with the onset of darkness, they began to evacuate their wounded vehicles from the neutral strip. By the way, in the reports of the 8th Guards Army, it was especially noted that during the battle on March 27th, radio stations of the enemy tank units reported that there were solid minefields ahead and no passages in them. During March 28-29 in the defensive line of the 47th Guards Rifle Division, the enemy did not make any attacks defending on the previous lines, and conducted methodical rifle and machine gun fire, artillery and mortar fire on the Soviet front line, under the cover of the smokescreen, evacuated their tanks and APCs, and collected the wounded and killed from the battlefield. According to the testimony of a captured lieutenant platoon commander of the 3rd Company of the 119th Panzergrenadier Regiment, 25th Panzergrenadier Division, the German units operating in this area had the task from the morning of March 28th to continue the offensive, but due to heavy losses suffered during the attacks on March 27th, the offensive was canceled. So, the German counterattack on the positions of the 47th Guards Rifle Division of the 8th Guards Army was successfully repulsed, and the enemy failed to break through by the shortest route to the garrison of the encircled Kustrin. But the fighting did not end there, because at the same time the enemy struck to the north, at the positions of the 5th Shock Army units. How the events developed there, as well as the fight against the groups of German encircled men who tried to break out of the ring near Kustrin, will be described in the next part of the article. Thank you for watching the video to the end. Forget to put a like and subscribe to the channel. It's important to me. See you soon.